Welcome to Aesthetic TV. I'm Stuart Brazel coming to you live from the stage of The Aesthetic Show. And today we're talking to world-renowned cosmetic dermatologist and age reversal expert, Dr. Shino Bay Aguilera. As the founder of the Shino Bay Cosmetic Dermatology Plastic Surgery and Laser Institute in Miami, Florida, Dr. Aguilera uses 17 years of advanced training to treat his patients with the best products and techniques in the business. He shares the secret to maintaining a youthful appearance and honing your inner and outer beauty in his new book, Be Youthful. I love this cover, by the way. Thank you. So, Shino, how has your personal journey contributed to your interest in promoting beauty and self-confidence? Well, I always wanted to be a physician, and I was trying to find a way that I could be a physician that could help people feel good physically and emotionally. So, becoming a dermatologist, I think, was the best option for me. Um, I came from Panama, and, um, you know, trying to find my American dream and, and trying to get an education here in the United States. So it just so happened that uh, by accident I ended up being a male model. And, I don't uh, think that was by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so for me that gave me uh, an insight of how you would feel if you didn't look the part, if your skin was staying in good shape. Uh, nothing worse than go to a casting in a room full of good looking people that had gray skin and you, you know, I would walk in and I just wanted to turn around and walk out. But it allowed me to understand how important feeling good about yourself means to people. And if you have gray skin, most of the time you feel great about yourself. So how did you decide to open the Shino Bay Institute in Florida and what were you going through in your life at that time? Um, actually, I was a resident. Um, and then I grew up in LA, my family lives in California and Glendale, and the plan was finish my education and go back to LA. But I always feel like I'm spiritual guided because something tells me you need to stay in Florida and open your practice in downtown Florida, and that's what I did. So of course everyone wants to know the, the secret to staying young, and I really like the way you, you call it your personal fountain of youth. So what are some key factors causing facial aging and what can we do to slow down the process? That is the hot topic always. Correct. And the most important thing is that the patient needs to be in charge of their own architecture. And I tell that to my patients during consultation. I don't live with you, so you need to know when to come. So there's nothing worse than have a patient to tell the physician, you tell me what I need, in my opinion. So if you know what happens at different decades, you should be able to be in charge of your own architecture because you cannot inject yourself. So if you know that after age 40, most people start to truly age, and what happens, you start losing the deep fat compartment, causing a face to look tired. And after that, 50 and above, you start losing bone on your face. So you need to know what's happening to you, so you know where, when to come, and where should you be treated, you know, because there's nothing worse to have the architecture of bone of an elderly woman or man with the volume of fat of a 20-year-old. It just doesn't look real. Yeah, that math just does not add up. Okay, so what can viewers do to prevent wrinkles and really keep their skin looking flawless? Well, for the skin, it's nothing better than, you know, prevention. So the best thing is trying to avoid excessive sun exposure. We are uh, creatures that need sunlight in order to, to stay healthy, but you should not abuse uh, the sun and damage your collagen and elastic fiber in the process. So using a, a sunblock during the day and using a retinoic acid, whether it's retinol, which is non-prescription, or a prescription Retin-A or Tasra, that will allow you to increase the level of collagen elastic fiber because the retinoic acid family prevents the breakdown of collagen by inhibiting enzymes that break it and it helps you turn on genes that make new collagen. That's why women have been using Retin-A or Retinol for the last 40 years and they're 80 years old now, they have no one wrinkle. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Now, I love in your book, there's a beautiful spiritual message. It's about accepting yourself throughout your book and how does living in harmony and nurturing positive thoughts really affect your outer beauty? It always does because um, youth is an energy that is harnessed according to the way you, you view life. So people are useful, they're usually people that are 
positive people that look forward to the future and um, you know and take care of themselves because of that. Uh, aging is being a is about being pessimistic yeah. and retired from life. Um, so people that manage to to be spiritual and be in harmony with the universe and do everything from a place of love and that includes self-love and self-acceptance tend to harness the, the elixir of the fountain of youth. Um, you know, people that are pessimistic have a lot of regret, regrets and, and jealousy, envy. They tend to as accelerate the aging process. And also you can sense their negative energy. You know, you, you want to be around positive people. Exactly, definitely. Okay, so I have to ask, one of the things that fascinated me most in your book is we have to talk about the use of snail slime to increase collagen. Walk me through this. Well, the first time I saw snail slime for the ski was in, in Bogota, Colombia. And uh, actually they had the actual snails out there and I thought, oh, this is a little crazy. You know, who does that? And the guy was selling the snail. And then I came to the American Academy of Dermatology and there he was, they were selling snail slime. So basically the slime of the snail has gross factors that helps the cells on the skin to behave and act younger, increasing the amount of collagen and elastic fiber. So that's the reason that using uh, animal derived gross factors can influence your own skin cells to behave younger. This snail slime actually from um, a company in the United States called Biopel and the product called Tensage. It was used for women that have radiation therapy for breast cancer which damaged the skin and it helped heal the skin in almost no time. So that's if it's fascinating. Good, correct. So if it's good for a skin that's damaged with radiation, it's good for a normal healthy skin to stay useful. It's like I have a whole new respect for, for snails, right? Correct, yeah, and don't eat them. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we need Okay, them. so obviously you're always on the forefront of what's cutting edge. So what technology are you currently offering at your practice that you're excited about? What I'm most excited about my practice and what put me on the map on the world of aesthetics is a technique that I do with a product called Sculptra Aesthetics. And basically I create a technique called Precise Sculpt. And what I do with that technique is I can imitate bone and help the architecture of the bone. Earlier I said that when you lose fat, you look tired, but you don't look elderly. But when you start losing the bone architecture, then you start looking elderly. So with this product, injecting supraperiosa on top of the bone, I can fake bone, I can fake fat, and I thicken the skin with collagen elastic fiber. So it takes care of the three tissues that goes away with age fat, bone, and collagen on your skin. So it really reverses the aging process and it holds it. So that's what I'm the most proud in my practice and it's what I do the most. That sounds just absolutely wonderful. I know that you have some seriously happy patients. So speaking of patients, when you see a new patient, what is the process that you go through to connect with them and try to find you know, the negative vectors that are affecting their face and help slow down the aging process and, and volume loss. So when I'm on a consultation, there's something just like this, like we're talking and you're a patient, you tell me you're concerned. I'm always studying the face, what are they doing? Because I can get messages of what vectors has changed, what, what, what needs to be retouched or put back where it used to be. One of the things that people don't think about, especially in the world of aesthetics, is about bruxism grinding and clenching because it gives premature aging around the mouth. And a woman without grinding and clenching will lose, just by the fact that she's a woman, 30% more bone in the area of the mouth than men. Uh, That's a big number. It's a big number. And it's not because women like to talk a lot, but it's because <laughs> We do men, like to talk. <laughs> but it's because menopause. So what happened, the mouth started moving retrograde and the distance from the tip of the nose and the lip would elongate. And as the jaw starts moving retrograde, you start getting the corners of Mars to, to turn down, they get marionette lines, and then they start doing little gestures with their mouth, you know, either this or the I Steven see that Tyler, all the time. Or they do this where it looks like orange peel. That creates muscle tone, so your mouth stays in position, but it creates a lot of wrinkles. So as my patient is talking to me in the consultation, I try to pay attention to what she's doing with her mouth or him what is going on in the area of the cheekbone. Are the cheekbone disappearing? If your orgy curve, the apples of the face are disappearing, then I start seeing, does this patient look tired to me? 
but the patient started looking like a grandma to me. If she looks tired, I know I need to imitate fat. If she started looking like my grandma, I know I need to work deeper. I need to fake bone and make sure that I bring back that structure and not allow it to change anymore. That is a really great concept. Thank you. It has really helped change the way my practice operates, but it has created a, a, a culture of, of, of people that they are in charge of their own architecture. According to your book, we are entering a new era of regenerative medicine in which scientists, engineers, biologists, chemists, and physicians are joining forces to encourage the body to heal its own damaged tissue. How has the combined work of so many experts helped advance dermatology? Well, we're living in very exciting times where we have epigenetic studies, we have understand, we understand how stem cells work and growth factors and cytokines. So all this work from different um, uh, specialties uh, or researchers who allow us to really stay useful for a long time. We are able now to uh, grow organs and regenerate uh, regenerate tissue that, in a way that we never had dreamt before. Um, stem cell therapy is going to be uh, the, the new way of trying to keep the, the body and the face useful and healthy. It, it's incredible and it's such a collaborative process. I feel like it's the meeting of all the minds. Yeah, so I think well, what I tell my, my patients, uh, when you look at a 50-year-old lady now, she could look like she's on her mid-30s or sometimes early 30s, right? Okay, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because we have, act there's a paradigm shift where we understand the, uh, understand the aging process better. We have all these studies with stem cells and growth factors and epigenetics where we are kind of mastering um, to maintain the body younger, a lot longer than we used to do. Back in the day, most 50-year-old look really elderly and now they're looking really young. So it's like 50 is the new 30, right? Exactly, and 60 looks really sexy these days too. <laughs> I like that. Now with so many new products entering the industry, some with very similar effects, is it hard for people to choose which products are actually going to deliver the results that they're advertising? And how do you research and verify the efficacy of a product before bringing it to your office to make sure it's up to your standards? Well, one, one of my guilty pleasures and a confession is that I love to go to Sephora. It's oh, me too. It's <laughs> one of my favorite stores, but I go there because I do my research of what my patients are using and what, uh, you know, what all these hope in a jars are telling them to, to do. Um, Does so, the product match the brand name, exactly. right? Exactly. So I try to teach, especially in, in a chapter of my book called Lotions and Potions, is that just because a bottle said that it has vitamin C, doesn't mean that the vitamin C that is in there is viable, it has the right concentration, and it's gonna work as well as the vitamin C that you can get in any doctor's office. For a physician, we like to see papers and see the research behind that supports the claims of the product. So we're trying to scrutinize that. So you have to have the right concentration of, of the active ingredient, and also you wanna know how long it's gonna last on the shelf because if they have the right concentration, but it's gonna degrade in no time, you really don't put in anything on your face that is of value. So in this chapter, I teach what all the ingredients that do work, that promise what they deliver, and I even uh, tell the brands that I like, that I think have the, the right concentrations and the right active ingredient that's going to maintain a healthy, younger looking skin. Transparency is key when it comes to products. Correct, yes. So it's also very notable and admirable that you qualify the aesthetic expectations of your patients up front to determine if they're a good fit for your institute. So talk to me more about your process of accepting patients to your practice. Well, in my practice, that's why we have consultation, because it's like dating, the energy has to be right. You need to like me and I need to like you, and uh, it's like a merry uh, match made in heaven. Yeah. I even encourage patients to go a second opinion because we are here in a business to make people feel good about themselves. And I tell right off the bat what my philosophy is. I'm a minimalist. I use the least amount of bottles. I'm a physician because I like movement. I don't like frozen faces. And I like when I do my fillers to be very natural. If somebody can tell that you have fillers on your cheeks or on your lips or under your eyes, to me, it's not a good job. 
So people need to look at you, not your feelers. So everybody has their own idea of beauty and I'm no one to judge. So if we see that we're not matching, then I basically tell the patient, you know what, I don't think you're gonna be happy with me because I don't do that type of work. I'm a minimalist. So there's other doctors that, that you'll probably be a lot happier with me. That, that will take your money and will, put whatever you correct, want in there. Correct. But uh, you know, it needs to, the energy needs to be right. You know? Well, it's all about that positivity. Exactly. All right, well, I'd love to take a look at some of your best work. Okay, definitely. Perfect. Oh, wow. So what we're seeing here is your typical 45-year-old female that likes to look very thin. Uh, in the process, she has lost all the fat on her face. That's why I always say, after 40, you need to choose between your funny or your face. That's, that's the same. Correct? Yeah. So you could see that um, the second patient too, when you look at them, they don't look, they don't look elderly. Mm -mm. They just look... She looks tired, tired in the before. Tired. So what does that mean? She's losing the deep fat compartment. If you bring the architecture back, she goes back to the way she used to look. So basically, you're in charge of your own architecture. So I always say, when you look at a room, you look at everybody exactly right here. You do. And with a fraction of seconds, you put them in a box. You say, this person is young, this person is elderly. Now you look at him and you say, wow, you know, this gentleman doesn't need any fillers. He's chubby, you know? Why would you put fillers on him? But if you study, he's looking elderly. He's an elderly black male. And if I thicken the architecture of the bone, he looks years younger but he actually looks thinner because the skin fits much he better. He does look thinner. Right? He, his skin fits much better on that skull. So basically that's what I'm trying to do and teach on my book that you should know what's happening to you. Most people, like you said earlier, don't know that part of the aging process that they're losing bone on their face. And if you know that you can do something about it, especially before you change, you're going to be one of those ladies like Raquel Welsh, Jane Fonda, Sophia Loren, They're that managed ageless. to be ageless, right? Prevention. Prevention is better than correction. I love that. That's such yeah. a great philosophy. Now, in your book, there's a chapter, Lotions and Potions, and you discuss the importance of a patient envisioning the benefits of their products. So, can one do this by thinking of their cells generating new collagen as they apply the eye cream? I feel like it's you're manifesting. It's like a, a meditation almost. Exactly, and that should be, it should be your same routine where you enjoy, you, your body's your temple and you're taking care of it. And by taking care of it. I am rejuvenating my skin. Exactly, <laughs> for everything that you do, needs to have the power of intention. So I tell my patients and in the book I mentioned that when you do anything in life, you should put the power of intention to it. So if you know that this eye cream is supposed to regenerate tissue by increasing collagen, you just see that happening. You, every single cell in your body is there to work for you. You just have to tell them that. Okay, I'm totally doing that now. I love this. Okay, I have one last question before we sadly have to say goodbye. What do you want your readers to take away from reading Be Youthful? Well, my book has a lot of information about architectural changes, uh, tissue changes, lotions and potions, laser botox. All of that is great because we will allow you to understand the aging process and will allow you to be in charge of your own architecture. But that's not the main message of my book. My main message is that you should love yourself in every decade. You know, you should be able to have self-love and self-acceptance, which it doesn't mean that self-acceptance means that you have to have inattention to your looks. Self-acceptance means that you need to understand that there's going to be times where no matter what you do, this wrinkle may not go away. And you should just accept it you know, and be grateful that you got to live to age 80 or 90 and love your body and your face at every decade. Be the best version that you could be of yourself every decade, but don't lose track of your humanity and don't try to um, hate yourself because you cannot look 20 anymore. The 20s were the 20s. You didn't have that life experience, right? Correct. Yeah, I mean, 20s, I was so insecure. <laughs> so, you know, that's why I say youth is wasted on the young. 
I like the 40s, you know, I'm going to be 47 this year. I would never guess that. And it's the best decade of my life because I'm more spiritual. I have no insecurities like my 20s. And on your 40s, you have the most money that you ever had. So you can, you know, don't worry about finances the way you did on your early 20s and 30s. So embrace every decade. I'm looking forward in three years becoming 50. And I hope that the 50 is going to be even better than my 40s. Oh, I have a feeling it will be. Well, thank you so much for giving us an inside look at Be Youthful. And I wanted to say um, uh, one of the reasons uh, I created a book too, uh, I used 20% of the sales of this book to, to support an organization in Broward County in Florida, where my office is. Uh, it is the name of the organization is Handy. And what Handy does is uh, take care of abused, neglected children. Uh, we give them housing, we give them schooling, um, counseling, tutors, and 100% of these abused children gets to go to college. And the reason I like to help this organization is, if you know my life story, I grew up really poor, and the only reason I'm successful is because people like Hadi believed in me and helped me, gave me the resources so I could have a better future. So it's my time to pay back. Mm -hmm. So every book that I sell, 20% of that book will go to support the children of Handy. Well, that's such a positive message. Make sure to order your guide to staying youthful inside and out online at Amazon.com. Thank you for joining us. I'm Stuart Brazel for Aesthetic TV. Until next time, stay tuned and be youthful.